we saw how we can use uh, special uh, C functions to deal with files, to open a file, read a file, um, write to a file, things like that. Turns out you can do same kinds of things with directories using a separate set of functions. A directory, remember, is a way of organizing files and subdirectories in a hierarchical structure. And the important thing to keep in mind is that even though we think of a directory as containing a whole bunch of files and subdirectories, it doesn't actually. Remember, you have a table of inodes, and that's actually how things are stored on, the on a hard drive. The hard drive doesn't have a blob of memory which contains directory and all the files inside it. No. All files on the entire file system are have sort of like a flat structure, but we use directories as a way of organizing this hierarchy. Because if you had one big system with everything in the root file system, it would, be, it would just be unmanageable. So all of the hierarchies to information, that is directories, subdirectories, that's all um, done using these special files called directories. So keep in mind a directory does not really contain, does not have all the data for the files and subdirectories. A directory is actually just a file. It can be opened using the open file function, um, but this is not recommended because it does not work if open mode, for example, is read-write or uh, just write. Uh, or, sorry, if read write or if write is disabled. So they cannot be created using the create function call or the open function call. Okay, to create directories you have to use a special um, special file function. So a directory, as we said, is an is implemented as a file. So if you were to look inside a directory, what you would really see is a table. You would see a table of inode numbers, and for each inode number, a name. For example, in the current, let's say in a particular directory, you will have an inode for the current directory itself, and dot dot, which is the parent directory. So these are null terminated strings, so even for dot, you will have a null termination character. For dot dot is just a name and you'll have a null termination character. It points to the inode that corresponds to the parent directory. The parent directory is just another file, just like this. So let's say you have in this directory you have three files and two subdirectories. Well, each of these files will have a file name. That's a null terminated string and an, and an associated inode. Here's a second string for a file name and the inode and then a third file with which is a null terminated string and inode and then these directories look exactly the same they just look just like files they have a name and an inode okay so these last two things both of these foo and sd are um, directories although you can't really tell just by looking at them how can you tell well, you have to go to this inode and get information using stat or something like that. And actually, there's other ways to get it, but you have to go to the inode, look inside the inode table entry, that's this inode, and you will see whether this particular thing is a file or a directory. Just looking at this, you can't really tell what RT is as opposed to foo. Okay, so this is a schematic view of storage in uh, directory structure. It's not really stored like this. It's actually stored using um, a little bit more complicated data structure. So the way they are stored is using the dir int struct. So there's a whole bunch of functions that we use with directories. And these, all of these calls, all of these functions use the dir int struct. Okay, so one of these things in here is the inode name, I'm sorry, the inode number, and the other thing is the name. So when we looked at this schematically, you can think of it as a table, but it's with table with many entries, and we're just showing two of them. Those two and those two uh, uh, t 
table entries or those two table columns I guess you would say inodes and names are just two of a whole bunch of things in this complex data structure okay so for now that's all we need to know there's other things that we don't really have to worry about okay so now if you want to create a directory you can call this make dir command sorry make dir function it's also a command but you're not this is actually a C function where you give it a path and you give it a mode and this will create for example in this case create a file called slash temp slash sorry create a directory called slash temp slash dir with these permissions 711 that is um, 7 is read write execute and 1 is just execute okay so this would say create a directory with read write execute permissions for me and only execute permissions for everyone in my group and and other users okay so you would call you this is a way to create directories from within a C program you can also do the opposite that is remove a directory give it the name of a path and the return value will indicate whether the remove directory rmdir which is also the name of the command remember if that worked or not if it's zero that means it worked if it's anything other than zero it failed why how can it fail let's say you don't have permissions to remove a particular directory so only directories that you have permissions for will succeed if you try to remove them and the other thing to remember also is that just like with the remove directory remove dir command this only works if the directory is empty so if you want to remove a directory remove all the files first and you can remember the way to do that is to use the remove or unlink command c command i'm sorry remove or unlink c functions use those to remove all the files in a directory and then when it's empty you can use the rmdir function to remove uh, a directory now we typically won't uh, create or open i'm sorry create or remove directories we will only do open dir close dir and read dir this will allow us to basically get around on a file system with these three commands there's actually a whole bunch of other other um, functions too but this allows to us to move around in a file system uh, from within a c program okay so how do you use open dir you need to pound include two things systypes.h and of course directory entry so that's what we'll be dealing with for the rest of uh, this chapter we will use this dir ent which is in this dir ent struct which is defined in dir ent.h okay so we will need that to open dir what is this return? It returns a pointer to a dir struct. And if, if, if you call this OpenDIR using the name of some directory and you get a null, that means it failed to open. If it's not equal to null, that's a valid pointer. Then you can access, um, that, uh, access that directory, access the data structures associated with that. So once you are able to open a directory sort of like files you use that directory handle which is actually just a pointer to dir so if you want to just close it you can close it by passing into the close dir function a pointer that you were uh, given from opening so open returns a pointer and you use that pointer to close it or if you want to read from that um, if you want to read the entries in that directory, you have to use that pointer that OpenDIR returned. So OpenDIR, here it is, returns a pointer to DIR. And then you use that pointer as a parameter to the readDIR function to now uh, uh, read the different entries in that directory. Okay. Once you read one entry, the next entry is ready to be read, sort of like a file. After the last entry, the subsequent readDIRs return null. So if you're 
writing a loop to read all the entries in a, in a directory, you would just keep reading things, keep do, calling readDIR until the return value is null. Okay, if it is null, that means you just there's no more things to read. So if you, if you open up an empty uh, directory, right away when you call readDIR, you will get a null. You can rewind, that is, go to the beginning of uh, this list of direct list of files in a directory, and it's, you can start from the beginning and keep and start reading again. So there's a whole bunch of other functions we won't look at so much. We actually we will look at uh, chdir, that is change directory, change working directory. We we'll also look at get cwd to get the name of the current working directory. Uh, we'll use candor. Now FTW used to be used and I, I uh, depends on the system but on most systems this has been deprecated. This allows you to recursively traverse the entire directory structure starting at a particular directory. So ex and it allows you to execute a function at each subdirectory. So this is a, this used to be a convenient way to for example um, go through all the directories of uh, alter subdirectories of a directory and let's say look for things or remove things um, and it stands for file tree walk so it allows us to execute commands on um, or do stuff with an entire file system but on most systems this has been deprecated there's a different way of doing this okay so this ends up our discussion on um, system commands that have to do with files and directories. The main thing you want to know about and the main thing that we will be using will be these three for directories, open, close, and read DIR. Um, note that this works with uh, current, uh, well, you have to keep track of which, which directory you're in. And when you open DIR, you have to specify an absolute path so there's a lot of pitfalls to avoid um, and when you once you open your when you do a read dir you're only reading from this directory not from for example the current working directory okay so those are things that you want to watch out for